Hey, my name is Jonathan Cooper Ellis. I'm an engineer in the field organization at Cloudera. I'm here with David Barricat, who is a senior global architect for IoT at Red Hat. Um, we're going to be talking about an end-to-end -end open source architecture for the Internet of Things, aka IoT. Um, so part of this end-to-end -end architecture involves a couple players. I'm going to take a second to introduce those. Um, obviously, if you're here at this conference, you're probably familiar with Cloudera. We are a modern platform for machine learning and analytics optimized for the cloud. Um, so we're really about data management and analytics. Um, Red Hat's a big part of this. You know them best for the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system, but they actually do a whole bunch of other things around IT infrastructure technology, um, like OpenStack virtualization, OpenShift container platform, and they have the whole JBoss product suite um, around enterprise integration and applications and things like that. So a lot of cool stuff coming out of Red Hat. And then a company maybe you're not as familiar with called Eurotech, um, they're on the operational technology side. So everything that you need to do to get devices out there at the edge or in the field talking to each other, communicating back to the cloud or a core platform, managing those devices, controlling them, um, you know, hardened hardware and software, that's, that's their area of expertise. Um, if you're familiar with IoT, you've probably heard of the MQTT communication protocol. They were some of the co-inventors of that. So they're bringing a lot of expertise around you know, IoT in the field to this. Um, and then underneath all of this, bringing us all together is the Eclipse Foundation, which, you know, best known for their IDE, actually has a lot of open source projects going on, um, particularly in the IoT ecosystem. Sort of like, you know, we're here talking about big data and Apache and things like that. Um, Eclipse has really everything cool going on in open source is coming out of Eclipse. So just, to, you know, another couple words on Eclipse. There's, you know, tons of code, tons of projects, tons of developers from around the world contributing to these things. Um, and some really big companies backing these projects as well. So you're familiar with these logos up here. You know, Cloudera, Eurotech, Red Hat, of course. Companies like Bosch, GE, Google, SAP. Um, more recently, Intel is getting involved in this as well. So, you know, again, a lot of momentum behind this. Definitely worth checking out. Um, just to introduce IoT architectures overall very quickly, you know, generally when we think about IoT, we talk about the edge and the core. So there's like the, you know, the gateway and the connected things over there, and that's what we consider to be the edge. And everything to the right of that, you know, the IoT integration hub, the data management and analytics platform, and the enterprise applications, that's sort of the, the cloud or the core platform layer. And between that is a wide area network of the internet. And that's really what differentiates IoT from typical solutions, is that you need to be able to control devices and get data and send control to things that are, you know, out there somewhere. Um, and so, you know, these, the key areas we talk about are the IoT gateways, which are really orchestrating and sort of quarterbacking that at the edge. Um, you know, that's where you're able to, to do analytics and things like that out there. And then you've got the integration hub, which is where sort of the, the edge of your core platform or your cloud platform, so you can securely manage your devices, bring data in, send control messages back out to them there. Um, and then you've got, you know, of course, IoT is really all about information at the end of the day and trying to derive value from data and information. Um, people are trying to do analytics and things like that, and so you've got you know, a platform for that, and then your enterprise applications integrate with that IoT hub component and the data management and analytics platform. So some of the projects that we're going to be talking about specifically, Eclipse Cura, Eclipse Copwa, two projects out of the I Eclipse IoT ecosystem, um, and Cloudera CDH, which you, you've heard of, and then um, Red Hat OpenShift Origin, which is an open source container platform. I'll Can pass I? it off now. Yeah. So the first example that we used to apply this architecture was on an Industry 4.0 demo uh, that we put together. Uh, basically, what we did was simulating how different uh, machines, uh, we put some sensors on it, and we collected different telemetry data coming from temperature, vibration, accelerometers, and things like that. And we're moving that, all that telemetry data to uh, an IoT gateway that is giving you the field connectivity over different field protocols like OPC UA or Canvas or Modbus, things like that, and they transform those streams into standards like MQTT or AMQP, so it can be sent to a centralized location, uh, but with the particularity that you're only sending the right data uh, and the right information. You can do filter, you can process, and you can apply some intelligence there. Obviously, the big thing that we're announcing with Cloudera and Eurotech is being able to apply edge analytics and running machine learning models at the edge, at the actual gateway, at the field, so you can uh, take decisions faster and better and react to uh, things before they occur uh, in a, a low latency uh, way of, of approaching these types of scenarios. And once you move to the IoT hub, you're collecting all the data, all the information, you're applying different uh, device management 
uh, capabilities uh, to be able to handle and control all your uh, infrastructure that is going to be deployed at the field. And we're uh, dumping all that data to the centralized data management platform that is provided by Cloudera. They get all that data, ingest that, store that, and are able to basically, with the real-time data and the historical data, uh, be smarter about how they create those predictive uh, machine learning models, and once they're built, uh, they're pushing that, everything to the edge to be running right there. So we have machine learning models running at the edge, at the core, or at any given point in this uh, architecture that we put in. So. <clears throat> Uh, we created a demo, it's 100% uh, functional, uh, we're going to have it at the booth, so please come and check it out. But basically we wanted to simulate a company that is having a hard time in uh, running uh, unplanned maintenance windows with a lot of downtime in, and that's affecting the production cap capacity of their facilities. And they wanted to kind of move to a, a more proactive way of uh, handling the risk and being able to schedule planned maintenance windows that are a lot shorter and that are a lot more cost efficient. So we changed to a data-driven uh, uh, kind of architecture and to a condition-based monitoring way of doing these things. And uh, I don't have time to explain everything here, but I just wanted to let you know that everything that we're going to show in a video right now, it is up and running, is real, is POC ready, and there's nothing simulated. So please come and check that out uh, afterwards at the booth. Uh, if you want to know some of those projects uh, better, this is uh, more or less that we're doing with Camel, Kafka, Spark, and things that you already know. And obviously, we have commercial enterprise offering and support by the three partnerships that we're uh, collaborating in this initiative that are Cloudera, uh, Eurotech, and Red Hat. All right? So we're going to show a demo right now. Uh, it's going to be probably a little short on time for the video, but let's go there. Six months ago, the company's data science and engineering team worked closely with its stakeholders to develop and design a predictive model and IoT solution to maximize efficiency and minimize cost. Our demo begins in the morning of a typical day. Bob, the executive, just received a new order from one of its strategic partners. Bob reviews the numbers over the last six months, noting that revenue is looking good and steady, production capacity is a healthy 95%, and their cost per unit has remained consistently lower. Planned maintenance costs have risen as expected, but offset by a much greater reduction in unplanned maintenance and line shutdown frequency. His facilities, while continuing to age, show no signs of weakness and orders are progressing. Bob sends an email to Alexandra, the operations manager, to start the new order. A few minutes later, Alexandra reviews the production calendar for her facilities. She looks over the in-progress operations from the job started last night. Everything looks green on line one, and the real-time telemetry confirms this. Looks like Atlanta will have room for the new order later today, so she schedules a new run to start as soon as last night's batch completes. Fast forward a few hours, and the new order is progressing. Alexandra happens to be looking at her console when she notices something happening on the line. The predictive model has evaluated the incoming telemetry stream and noticed an anomaly. The power supply on one of the machines on the line has gone bad. Rather than wait for the component to completely fail as was done in the past, the system determines the optimal time to schedule maintenance for the failing machine based on production schedule, availability of parts and technicians, and severity of the problem. A maintenance window is scheduled later today, parts are ordered, and personnel are notified. When the parts come in, Tim, the line technician, arrives at the facility and he opens up his maintenance tablet. His task list indicates which machine needs service, and he can review the telemetry to confirm the diagnosis, open up the installation and repair manuals on his tablet, and get to work. A few hours later, Tim has completed the job. He cleans up the area and places the machine back in service and confirms the repair looking at the unit's telemetry as it comes back online. The next morning, Bob and Alexandra attend their daily stand-up meeting with the department heads. They review the automated report from yesterday from, with the team. Bob explains that by proactively doing the maintenance, the company avoided a much greater loss than if they'd waited until the machine experienced a hard failure, which could have brought the line down for a much longer time. Bob is satisfied with the results of the maintenance event, and so is the business. Bob shows the leadership team that while planned maintenance costs have increased over the last six months, much more expensive unplanned maintenance has dropped off significantly, ultimately reducing costs and increasing business performance and its reputation as a reliable vendor in the industry. 
A few weeks later, the new solution ends up saving lives and the workers in the plant. During one of the runs, a machine on the same line has a catastrophic and unexpected failure that threatens the safety of the whole facility. A rotor inside one of the cooling units is jammed, driving temperatures to dangerous levels. The system intelligence, driven by its predictive model, decides to immediately halt the entire line and execute an emergency shutdown. Again, parts are ordered, technicians are notified, and a maintenance event is scheduled to begin immediately to address the unplanned event. Tim, the technician, once again gets to work and replaces the entire assembly in a few hours. He places the new machine back in service, verifying the telemetry once again and bringing production capacity back to normal levels. The order is completed and the company's reputation as a reliable vendor remains. This ability to execute machine learning driven analytics across the data management chain allows businesses to design their needs. In this case, latency is paramount. The round trip to the data center could have cost lives. Okay, um, so as I said, we're going to have uh, the booth running at the Clouderas, a booth that is by the main entrance. We're going to have another pass at 4 p.m. today and another one at 11 tomorrow morning. Please come out, check out and we'll show you how this is running under the covers because, as I said, it's, it's working end-to-end, -end, it's running analytics as the, uh, at the different uh, tiers, and, and we should be able to give you much more insight about how the whole solution is working together. Thank you.